Hi! Welcome to the next devlog of my VR magic based game. I'm Kate and in today's video I will working on a major improvement to the gesture system and I will create the first two-handed spell. This video will be more technical than the previous one. I will make chapters to this video, so you can easily skip some sections of this devlog if you like. So, without further ado, let's get started. How does everything work? What happens when we draw with our hands in the air? The drawing begins when we press and hold the grip button. Since that, we track hand movement till the buttons release. The target point of tracking is not a root of a hand, which is a palm, but the tip of the index finger. With that point, we can draw a gesture without actually moving the hand, but simply by rotating it. When the button is released, we gather all drawn points as a global position and normalize them. First of all, we make sure that points are in the same space as a template one. We cannot rely on a global position because players will be constantly moving. So we transform them relatively to the body. Next, we sample points by n equal parts. Then, and this is not part of the original algorithm, but my improvements to better fit into the VR rotate all points to be in front of the body. Next, scaling points to ensure scale invariance. We can draw either a small or a big version of a gesture and both need to be valid. The last step is to translate these prepared points to the center of the body. The templates follow the same normalization procedure and with that we can compare them and get the result. I will leave a link to the algorithm paper in the description if anyone is curious for more details. I wanna go back to the rotation part because it's something I added recently. The reason I added it is because when a player's head is not in a straight line with a body, it makes the whole system unstable. When we draw a circle in front of us, it works fine. But when we turn our head 19 degrees and draw a circle then, we actually get a rotated version of it. That is not something that has a good feeling. I want to give a player freedom to look around while casting the spells. Since the last devlog, my main goal was to refactor the spell system code so it can handle two-handed gestures. Previously, each hand had their own gesture manager, so it was impossible to get another hand gesture point not without a lot of hacking. Just a quick look at how it works right now. Gesture manager is now a center point of the system. When a spell invoker, in that case the hand, starts to make a gesture, it gets registered as a source to the manager. The gesture is finished when all sources finish registering their points. So, when we start drawing with one hand and add another, even if we release the button of the first hand, the system is still waiting for the second hand for its points. With that flexibility, we can add another gesture source, um, magic stuff for instance. Also, 
we don't have to limit ourselves to just two hands. We can draw as many strikes as we want if we just release our hands alternately. Now, let's see what we can actually do with all of those changes. This spell has two phases. First is a gesture to select a certain spell. Second phase is charging. We just need to move our hands freely. Maybe in the future I will add some patterns to follow. After we have gathered enough power, we put our hand on the ground and boom! Spikes have three different stages, depending on charge value from small to big. I am not good at the visual effects, so to create these spikes I followed the tutorial of Gabriel. You can find a link in the description if you are interested. After testing for a while, I suddenly realized there is a noticeable lag when gestures are recognized. The profiler showed me some extremely inefficiency in my algorithm. I tried to optimize it a little bit, so I switched to the more efficient version of my algorithm, but it doesn't do its job for 3D space. So I started to think about parallelism. The code was rewritten to use a compute shader to throw this operation on a GPU, but that didn't work well either. After a while, I realized I actually don't need that complex recognition that this algorithm provides. I don't need direction and stroke invariant. It's not even that I don't need it. I definitely don't want this. I want to be able to have similar gestures but with different direction. For example, simple lines from down to up, from left to right and so on. After switching to a simpler approach, the profiler looks much nicer. We discussed the core mechanic, but what is this game gonna be about? Well, I don't know. I will try to answer it in the next video. I am slowly leaving the prototype stage and transforming it to an actual game. I will hopefully have answers to questions like what genre it will be, what art style, how level design might look like. This will be kind of a challenge because I am definitely not a game or level designer. <laughs> if you have any ideas or thoughts, please let me know in the comments. Any suggestions are welcome. That's it for today's video. If you are curious about more updates and news about this project, feel free to follow me on Twitter, where I post a few times per week. Thank you for watching, have a great day until the next time!